Hey, we're going to hear from Abram Smith's former high school coach at Abilene High tomorrow. Just kind of look back at where he was when he ran for over 4,000 yards, came to Baylor as a running back, became a linebacker, and then, of course, during the spring, Dave Aranda and staff moved him over. The rest is history. As the running game has been like night and day, and what the offensive line has done is just sometimes hard to imagine. Yeah, he's uh, 215 yards away from a 1,000-yard season. Uh, he's already got 10 touchdowns, and I think the most impressive stat for Abram Smith is the fact that he's averaging 7.5 yards per carry. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's giving the ball twice on every series. It's just picking up first down. So he, he's been phenomenal. He's been the exact type of runner that they needed in this offense to make it work because I think we can all see if it was just Treston back there, this thing wouldn't be operating, and that's not a knock on Treston. It's just different style. Different yeah. style. Abrams built different. Abrams built more for this this kind of a of a grind in this offense. So yeah, they complement each other really well. But uh, he's he's been fantastic. Yeah, Abram goes that way. He I goes mean, that's north. Yeah, just, he, goes he goes north. that way, and you don't have to worry about. You know, I, I the other day against BYU, he strung one out around the right tackle, and I thought, oh, look at him living dangerously. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, not running just straight ahead. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to put this into perspective, if you guys uh, don't mind. Last year, when Baylor – I'll, I'll try to get to that in just a second to put what he's done this year into perspective. One of the uh, best offensive linemen ever, highest-ranked offensive lineman recruit in Baylor football history, is in our studio. Spencer Drangle played in the NFL as well, here with us on Sikkim 365 Radio. How about that introduction, huh? I mean, you can't get much better than that. I mean, we might as well just say, okay, they're, we're done. <laughs> How, you've been able to watch them and what they're doing, and you knew how struggle, how much of a struggle it was. How much of a night and day difference? What do you see as somebody who played that position on the offensive line? Yeah, you see guys becoming the identity they want to become. Um, you know that the identity of that O line is like, hey, we're going to run the ball and we're going to run it well. And so much of the offense is predicated on that, and it's a pride point um, for us. I know when I was playing, you know, if we didn't run for two fifty, we were upset. Uh, and I think that's becoming what it is now with these guys out there is, hey, they want to run the ball and they want to run it well. What do you think is the, the bigger factor for them? Is it the new scheme that plays more into their skill set or is it the fact that they're in a tremendously uh, next level of shape than they were last year? You know, I think it's a, it's a combo of both. That, that scheme is very good for opening up huge holes for backs to hit as long as the guys up front execute. Um, but again, it is some of that, they're in a lot better shape. They know what they're doing, they're more competent in what they're doing, and they have more confidence in what they're doing. And you put all those together and you see what happens. Was the biggest mischaracterization of the old Baylor teams the fact that you guys were just pass happy? I used to hear that in the media, and it's like, yeah, you guys could pass the ball at will whenever you wanted to, but it's like people didn't really realize how well y'all ran the football as well. Yeah, we ran it pretty well. I mean, yeah. the run for 650 yards in a single game, not at a season, yeah. in a game, let alone a bowl game, uh, you know, kind of speaks to what we could do up front. Uh, that was a little bit of a special circumstance, mm -hmm. but I'm not knocking it. It's still a cool but, yeah. but But even still, you guys were running 85 to 90 plays in certain games. You weren't throwing 70 passes. No, and actually it was closer to – probably about 100 games yeah, or 100, 100 plays a game average. Mm -hmm. And we were honestly pretty split. Um, you know, it's just those large chunk plays that everyone remembers. Well, we broke off a couple long runs too. You know, I think, you know, we'd throw a pass and then run for 75 yards, right? We've, we've done that too. Um, but that, this team is, is, is starting to do that too. You know, you see a lot of long runs from both uh, Ebner and Smith back there. And uh, back to your points a little earlier, yeah, they're slightly different backs, but you need that in an offense. You need that, hey, one cut go guy, and you need that guy who's going to be a little bit more patient back there, trying to make something happen, and then can stick his foot in the ground and get up field. Spencer, what do you see? Uh, um, uh, I guess with the confidence, kind of the nasty side. You guys used to maul people. I mean, you that, again. Everyone used to think of the Art Briles offenses as almost finesse, throwing the ball deep all the time. You guys would lean on people three hundred pounds and heavier. The biggest example to me is the sixty-one fifty-eight game. You guys, that was Shocklin Wood just shoving it down TCU's throat and then popping a pass to Corey or to to Jay Lee or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. but yeah, you guys just grinded on people. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no. And what's it like to know that you can start to have the will of a player that's across from you? Oh, it does nothing but energize you. Like if you look across and they're like, "This is just a long game for me," and you can just see it in their face and in their eyes. You're like, "All right, it's gonna be a fun game for me, long game for them." And it's just, 
it gives you a lot of energy, gives the team energy, and it builds, again, that helps that confidence and, and uh, that cohesion with the group. Have you been almost like, who are these guys? What have they done? I mean, who they are now compared to what you saw a year ago? Um, like where'd they come from? Type yeah, guys? yeah. Go, uh, because uh, and they've added, obviously, transfers, and some guys are a year older. Some didn't play at all last year, but this is, I mean, th this is legitimate here. Yeah, this is exciting. Um, you know, I think everybody's got the potential to be it, and you just see guys who want it, right, who want to go out and work. And, and it just speaks to what um, Coach Rand has been able to do and, and his staff and, and the players that he has. You know, uh, you can have the best scheme in the world, but until the players buy in and the players say, all right, this is who we are and this is what we're going to do, nothing really matters, right? So the players buying in, and, and I think is the biggest thing for that. How much confidence does you do you get from knowing, because Gary Bohannon doesn't turn the ball over. He did the first time the other day in the end zone, and that was in the end zone, which I guess is probably the you know best the and worst. Yeah, 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 the best and worst place to throw one, I guess, <laughs> yeah. is, is trying to score. But, uh, but knowing that the worst that's going to happen is a punt. Does that make them more confident than knowing, like, most of the time they're not going to turn the ball over? It does. Yeah, it, it definitely – and obviously, as an offensive lineman, we don't want to punt. Mm -hmm. Like, we love the punters, but if – especially, I mean, the guy, he's awesome. Um, they're And they're fantastic. But if they don't see the field, that means we're doing a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we want. We don't want them to play, even though they're great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, no, it, it does – yeah, yeah. You don't want the punters to play very much. What's the biggest difference uh, for those of us who haven't been, you know, in the X's and O's like you have been as a former player? The biggest difference in this because schemes mattering, obviously, yeah. in a big way. So what's different uh, versus what maybe somebody would normally see or what you guys did, for example? Yeah, no, this one is a is a traditional wide zone. Um, basically, you want to just get everybody moving in one direction, mm -hmm. and somewhere a hole is going to open up. So if you get, you know, some guy pushes some guy fa farther along – a uh, defensive lineman farther along, and then somebody can able to hook somebody, well, that hole just opens up. You know, the scheme up front for them, or, you know, my interpretation of it is push them past farther, like the spot, right? Push them past yeah. farther than they want to go. So if they're trying to get the edge or trying to contain that gap, well, shoot, let them have the gap. Just keep widening that gap out farther. Um, but as, you know, a traditional, I say traditional, our offense really wasn't <laughs> right. um, back when I played, but, you know, as opposed to a power scheme where you see a lot of guys pulling, a lot of just double teams action going forward, um, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get vertical with the double teams. This is more of a horizontal thing. You know, we'll push you guys past. So almost let them open the hole for you. Pretty much, yeah. Kind of like when you allow a, a team, if they're coming at the quarterback on a screen play, huh? you guys didn't run that a lot, but you let them get close to the court. You want them. Okay, go ahead and go. Exactly, yeah, and that's exactly right. You, you know, you're using their momentum against them. Right. Um, and that can be in a lot of different aspects of football in general, but especially in this offense, if they're, you know, objects are hard to stop once they're in motion, especially 300 mm -hmm. pound people who are very strong. So if you can just keep them moving, well, great. Keep them moving towards the sideline. The back will make you right. Spencer Drango, again, former All American offensive lineman with us. Baylor uh, gets a chance to watch him up close and personal a lot more than before. He's been on with you, right? Uh, yeah, but, we, yeah, we got to do that again. By the way, JT and Pike Speak text in our Spencer Drango and Paul Catalina twin separated at birth. Now I'll say this <laughs> JT1, thank you, because that means that I look like I'm 29 years old. Can we do a split screen? Can we do, can we figure out this? It's the beard. It, yeah, it yeah. Is. No, yeah. I mean, bigger, I, and a lot of that is. Hey, great looking. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's what it is, right? Here's the deal. This section of the show has attracted a very specific kind of girl who likes this. <laughs> like, there are people going, this has got to be a thing. I can't grow that because it looked like I'd be Santa Claus with my gray, with my white beard. That's I, not I a can't, bad thing. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I can't know. It's, it is almost Christmas. So. It is yeah. almost Christmas, yeah. but I, I, it's just, it's, it's spotty. I, I can't do it. Wow. I, I can't. You look great, though. I like the... Thank you. You got to look. And it's appreciate very good. that. We're going to bring you back. I mean, <laughs> we'll bring you back. Yeah. So they're six and one. They get a bye week. What was a bye week, bye week like in a violent sport to get that chance, especially coming off a win? Yeah, no, it's, you know, there's a couple different mentalities. A, you want to rest, right? But you don't want to take the week off. So you go into a bye week saying, all right, we get the time to rest, the time to recover. All those little nagging injuries that you have, you know, maybe it's a, you're coming off a sprained ankle and it's just a little lingering. You have that extra time to rehab it. While practice is maybe a little lighter, but you're also kind of playing in the head um, for, the, for the next week going on. But it is a nice chance to just take a deep breath, 
reset and figure out whatever else you got going on in life. Um, and as far as going into the next week, you can't get lulled to sleep, especially off a big win. Um, you know, BYU is a good team. You can't go into the next game, Texas, thinking, hey, we're going to walk all over them. No, you, you got to take it seriously and be prepared going into that next game. Is it a little daunting playing a team on a, on a losing streak like Texas is because they're in a corner? Yeah, it, they're very dangerous is a good word to say. Um, you know, you can't fall asleep on them. They're going to give you their best chance, right? And they're not in a situation where they have nothing left to lose because there's still a lot, um, you know, bowl game is still a possibility. A lot of things they still have going for them, but they still have to get that next win to get there. And so you don't want to fall victim to being, you know, hey, we should, you know, we should walk over them. A lot of their games have been very, very close. Mm -hmm. um, you know, OU has been, was extremely close and mm -hmm. OU is a good team. So you know they have the ability and the capability. You just have to be able to respect that and go in with a, a confidence about it. Like, yes, we're going to take care of our job, but you can't overlook them. For a large part of your career, you guys were in Big 12 contention. I mean, you guys were mentioned in the preseason as being contenders. For this team, it was a little bit more up in the air. So for y'all, a bowl game was like, that wasn't even a question mark by the end of your career. I mean, that was a given. But um, – for a player, even though there's still a long way to go, getting bowl eligible, does that mean – I know you can't dwell on it and celebrate it necessarily, right? Because there's yeah. still so many games. But what did that mean when you accomplished that and know, like, hey, we are going to be going to the postseason? Oh, no. Actually, when uh, – after we won BYU this week, mm -hmm. I was seeing in my head we're going bowling. Yeah, okay. And it's just something – like, you have to recognize it because it is a big accomplishment, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's not a guarantee to go to a bowl game, yeah. a postseason game. And so you do have to celebrate it. But then it's like celebrate that night, right? Mm -hmm. And then move on. So you've accomplished the goal and you have to focus on what's coming next. Uh, and right now that's Texas. Yeah. I'm looking back on when you I'm talking about Texas. Was the 2015 game just excruciating? You had all the quarterbacks <laughs> injury, then Johnson got Bring up all the out. bad memories well, today. No, I just <laughs> – because, I mean – it, it's it's like you guys really were so much better than them. You were uh, during that time, but they got you in 12, and then they got you again in 15, and you had such a really good football team. Yeah, you know, I think um, I think we mentioned it on the postgame show that if we had two more minutes, oh, yeah. we would have won. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it, it was – we were just figuring out that concept that we used in the bowl game where I mentioned we ran for 650 versus North Carolina. So – you know, we were figuring it out, figuring it out. But, yeah, it, it was definitely a frustrating game, um, especially being senior day. You never want to lose on senior day. Um, you always want to upset that. So I, I understand the concept behind it. But, um, yeah, it, it was a little frustrating. But ultimately, you know, we learned from it, moved on, and made a, a good adjustments going forward. Beat so the was, living hell out of the Tar Heels. Was, oh, man. was Kendall Bryles just kind of like, like grabbing the whiteboard and going, all right, here's what we're going to do? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I know you guys had that kind of. No, it was in the dirt. It yeah, was in the dirt. <laughs> but you guys had that play. I know you had a, a couple of plays like that in the repertoire. But to do that, like we're going to run this one play about four different ways out of these formations the rest of the time. It, was that how it was? Or did he draw it up? Or what did you guys do to? Well, we we practiced the situation similar to this. Like okay, and it was a package that we were going to have in. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, Johnny Jefferson and. Um, uh, 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 T. Williams, yeah, they were all back there. Shock, yeah. we're all back there, and they were all taking you know snaps at quarterback for Wildcat, and that was we knew that was going to be that could be a big portion of our game. We didn't know it was going to be the biggest, right? <laughs> yeah. But you have some idea of going in, and then you just have to adjust, right? And there's not a lot up front different from a running play for us of who's behind us because mm -hmm. it's either it speeds up a little bit in the Wildcat, like if you know T. Dub was just going to take the ball and run. It, everything happens a little bit quicker. Linebackers come downhill a little quicker. You know, um, safeties come up a little bit quicker. But if you have a quarterback in the handoff, it takes some time. So it's a little easier for us with a quarterback. But if you know it's going to happen faster, you know, it's able to go. But to answer your question, yeah, I don't know really what happened. We just said, all right, we're going to run this, 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 and this. And it was like, all right, well, it's our normal offense. Nothing really changed. We just won't throw the ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right, though. Y'all had two more minutes. That game was going to be different. Yeah, I, I, was, I was sitting next to the late Sean Adams, who was, you know, obviously a big Texas reporter. And I remember him turning to me. It was like 20 to nothing. And he's like – they're going to find a way to screw up this game. Like, cause he was so down on Charlie at that point. He's like, they're going to find a way. And sure enough, just like, as you guys kept moving the ball and scoring, he's like, see, see. And then yeah. it was, was just not enough. But. I was doing sidelines for sports uh, radio USA that game. Uh, and uh, I just, they, they called down to me and they're like, Hey, what's going on here? I'm like, <laughs> 
I said, well, there's no quarterbacks left. They're like, <laughs> yeah. they're like none. I'm like, no. They're like, well, what about walk-ons? I'm like, I, I mean, no. I mean, I'm saying none. Like the walk-ons have had less time than anybody under the center this week. And he's like, are you serious? I was like, yes. <laughs> They have not done right. anything. And then Chris Johnson went out, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. He got hurt early. Yeah. That yeah. Wasn't, that and wasn't fumbled great. on that play, too. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't a great uh, situation. But, you know, speaks to the, the guys that we had that were come able, excuse mm -hmm. me, to come together and able to just find a way to compete. Was there not panic, but how or was there panic uh, when you're trying to draw plays up and, and you – there's no quarterback. Well, I mean, we had Lynx Hawthorne, who could throw the ball a far away, but he was a receiver, right? He, he took some reps in practice as a, you know, a just-in-case situation. Yeah. Like, you know, we're probably not going to need you, but we should, just in case. We ended up needing him. He's That's his um, nickname from now on, just in case. Just in case. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, Lynx. No, um, <laughs> but, yeah, it was just – up front, it was just like, all right, well, obviously we're going to be more run-heavy, and let's just – do what, really hone in on what we have to do to get the job done. What do you think of Dave Aranda and the job? I mean, obviously we've been talking glowingly about this team and the adjustments they've made, but he's just he's a different type type of cat, different personality than a rule or a Bryles or a Grobe even. Um, this team seems to be very physical. Uh, they seem to know their jobs very well, and, and he seems to have made some great hires this offseason and the changes that they did make. Uh, just what have you been able to kind of gather? I don't know if you've ever even been able to meet him yet or not, but uh, your thoughts on Dave Aranda? I've been able to meet him um, – once or twice now, and fantastic coach, fantastic human. Um, and ultimately, you know, that's what you want to see, right? I mm -hmm. think if, you know, if you're a great human outside of football, it's going to translate into football. And everybody that I've talked to, um, you know, I've got the chance to train with some guys from LSU uh, back when he was there, and everybody just has nothing but glowing reviews about him. Um, and from my experience, I, I can say the same thing, right? It's He's a great coach, um, really wants to, the best out of his players, and not just on football, but like in life, right? Yeah. He, he cares about the rest of his players and what, what else is going on besides football. You could tell those guys you trained with from LSU that they need to make sure that they block his number. Dave Aranda needs to yeah, block. Yeah, you don't need and any don't bad think, phone we, calls We really here. don't even have – I don't have any anxiety over it. No. I just feel like he's the perfect fit right now, and I think he's happy. But obviously, you know, obviously it's a big boy program, and they're looking for a new coach, and he's been there. So I, but I, I don't you feel like he's a really good fit, kind of like right now the Scott Drew of the football program. Oh, for here, with, with much more to accomplish. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. he's a fantastic fit, um, and you know, I'm, I'm a big LSU fan right now. I want him to keep winning. <laughs> I don't want anything, anything yeah. to co happen to Coach O because he needs <laughs> yeah. to stay there. Well, he's uh, gone. He's gone. He's gone. No, no, that's right. Him. Yeah, that's there. right. They, yeah. Um, yeah, that is true. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we need we need to keep doing well. I just gave yeah. you heartburn. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate you Absolutely, always. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you, Spencer Dranger, all Drango, all American offensive lineman from Cedar Park High School, played at Baylor on those Big Twelve championship games. And this teams, and this is Sikkim three sixty five radio. Riverbend Liquor and Wine, Lakeshore Drive.